I'm nervous. I get nervous when I'm on this show. Why? It's Rob, you ta- we've been talking all morning <laughs> since three. I know, but about the weather, because when I think about other things, we all want to know. We all want to know. You have an there opinion about most mm-hmm. things, which right. is why we love you, yeah. most of us. <laughs> <laughs> and Medina were going at it earlier. But anyways, we're just giving you a little inside scoop as to how yeah. we operate here. I feel like it the is show's fun. going pretty well. Yeah, yeah. so far so the show is going nowhere. <laughs> oh, so Oh, Rob Shade. <laughs> anyway, just so you yeah, we get off here, we go to a meeting. Yeah. I'm scarfing down my kale and quinoa, and then we're like, kale. on the set. So, mind you, Dina had kale and quinoa. I had pirate's booty for lunch. You <laughs> did. <laughs> about it. And I had some wheat noodles <laughs> from last night, so leftovers. Anyways, uh, yeah, let's talk about the California alcohol law. Yes. So we know that this bill has passed through the Senate. It is now on to the Assembly. And what does this mean? We talk about alcohol, state of California. Uh, we could actually see the booze flowing a little longer. Now, yeah, potentially right? could be, and we definitely want to hear from you on this. Yeah. If you are someone who likes to go to the bar, if you work in the bar scene, um, if you're somebody who is on the other side of the story, mm-hmm. please give us your yeah. opinions during what I'm about to tell you. So basically, Senator Scott Weiner of California um, did come up with this acronym called LOCAL, and what it stands for is Let Our Communities Adjust Late Night. Mm. So the whole thing with this is to pass a bill that would allow restaurants that serve alcohol to stay open until 4 a.m. if they wanted to. It's not a requirement. It would be more like a, hey, it's in your hands, communities, if you want to so let the mayors these places... have the decision, the, the last hand in, in this so decision? So ultimately, yeah, the mm-hmm. cities, the towns, the different jurisdictions, okay. the counties would get to decide if they want to do this. They can extend the alcohol sale hours on specific days of the week. It doesn't have to be every day. Oh. Um, but they could apply, essentially, for a license to be open until 4 a.m. Now, the interesting part about this is that Senator Weiner, who presented this, has actually had a family member pass away from a drunk driving incident. So I think that that might come across as an interesting nugget to this story. So he said, my aunt was killed by a drunk driver in the 70s when I was a kid. It was devastating to our family. I'm sensitive to drunk driving, but I don't think this will increase drunk driving at all. The bill is really about local control and local communities deciding for themselves in terms of what makes sense to allow alcohol service. So again, this is now through the Senate. Um, In September, I think, is when we'll likely see another vote on this, and that will be through the Assembly, and then it'll go to the governor's desk. But I'm curious to see what you all think. Should we allow restaurants and and bars to stay open until 4 a.m.? Well, I... So I moved here from L.A. and I moved from to Sacramento from L.A. And I remember All-Star Weekend was there, maybe uh, NBA All-Star Weekend 2011. Okay. L.A., of course, California, uh, the bar shut down at 2 o'clock. Mm-hmm. And when you have major events like that, parties go on until 4 or 5 in the morning. Mm-hmm. People from all over the world are in town trying to have a good time, celebrating the weekend. Mm-hmm. So it was... It was shocking to everyone, even mm-hmm. people who lived there, yeah. that at uh, 1.45, lights clearing on. lights on, clearing. Yeah. And at this point, That's they the were like, they were part. even saying. When the saying, lights come on, you're like, who <laughs> like, oh, I'm dancing with? And even with that, <laughs> they were saying, you can stay here until mm-hmm. 3 or 4, but all of the, the alcohol had to be taken off the table. If you had a drink in your hand, it mm-hmm. had to be gone out of your hand mm-hmm. by 2 o'clock. So in certain cities in california i can see this being beneficial because the economy already thrives on that you go to new york you can party all night long until the sun comes up so la yes but smaller places like sacramento which seems to be a little more conservative i can see where people have concerns but Mm -hmm. when you think statewide and cities that could really boom even more from this Mm -hmm. where uber you have uber pool uber xl Mm -hmm. lyft I don't see yeah. the harm in it in big cities like right. that. Right, and mm-hmm. it just will come down to responsibility of the person, mm-hmm. each individual person, knowing yeah. that you can stay out later than 1.45, at least you can get alcohol, because what last call is even around 1 a.m. now. Yeah. Because yeah. there's a lot of people at the bar, the club, mm-hmm. or the restaurant, wherever you're at. You know, to me, that seems really early because I'm coming, different from Canelia, originally from L.A., but now coming from Las Vegas, mm-hmm. where I don't even have to, to explain what that's like. People go there, it's an adult playground. People go there to party till the break of dawn and beyond. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's not it's only a little that. different. It, it's not just like the party scene. You know, there's there's shift work and people work you schedules drink, right. all over the place. Right. And you know, sometimes people are getting off at four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. 
Um, and, you know, so it, it's kind of, it, we live in a different world. It's yeah. not like everybody gets up at the same Nine time, they go to bed at the same <laughs> it's time. It it's a 24-7 it's a world that we live in. And the other thing that I think is interesting is that we're not doing this in a vacuum. It's not like every, every single Across state, the you know, they, they shut off alcohol at 2 o'clock in the morning. Other states have done this. Yeah. Other cities have done this. Yeah. So there's data out there that you can point to or at least research and say, if we did this, what may happen? Mm -hmm. You can actually look this stuff up and at least have some some case studies of where this has happened and you can see if the if the risk of the downside is worth the upside. Yeah, and you know, like Megan, I grew up in Reno and I had my first news job at a news station in Reno and I used to get off after the 11 o'clock show. And so 11.30 p.m., a group of us would get off, we'd go out to the casinos, not to gamble, but because that was the places that were open to go mm -hmm. have a drink, go get a beer after work. And I will say, that encouraged me to stay out longer and later. Mm -hmm. And so then the next day I was getting up at 10, 11 a.m. and I started my day later. I came to California, everything closes at two. I was home earlier, I was more productive the next day and my husband and I still talk about this. Thank goodness we have a two o'clock call time because sometimes you want it, you don't want to miss out. You have, you know, mm -hmm. FOMO where you have this fear of not being around the scene and wanting to be with all the people who you care about. and. So it, it definitely comes to that conversation about personally, you know, what would you like to do? But ABC 10 did actually interview someone in the restaurant industry. They said that this would suck for employees because they would right. have to be up later, mm -hmm. um, but it would be good for the business, as you were saying, for business the restaurants and because the bars. Because think dollars. about it again, and I lived before I lived in LA, I lived in New York. So it seems like nothing ever closes in New York, mm -hmm. but it, mm -hmm. sometimes it's not even about going out purposely to get a drink. Sometimes you get you leave somewhere late, you want to get food. In most yeah. places here, the restaurant shuts down 10 p.m. If I want to get food at midnight, mm -hmm. now most likely I will be able to because you're already open, you're already um, pushing uh, the time back a little further. So maybe now if <laughs> I want to get food at midnight, oh, then I'll get wine. So sometimes it's not even all about food. Yeah. Oh, having an extended liquor license, opens the kitchen maybe will possibly open the kitchen up a little mm -hmm. more too so yeah you know i'm seeing a lot of suck. a lot of people um talking online right now so what are they saying okay amber my best friend of over 20 years and her boyfriend were killed by a drunk driver i think we should think smart and at least try to prevent drink, drunk driving not give mm -hmm. more opportunities to allow it to happen i hear you there amber. um karen family grace okay did anyone else notice Okay. Jackie no. says making it 4 a.m. might as well be 24 hours. Monique, this is so no. disgusting and stupid. Go ahead and see if the people that drink and drive and kill more people. So I, we understand where you're coming from this, from that perspective. Um, Dina, do you want to read uh, one more time what Wiener had said? Because he also had a family member who was killed yeah. in a drunk driving incident. And we're not condoning the Absolutely behavior. Not. We're not saying no. yes, or I'm not, I'll speak for myself. I'm not saying yes, let's see this law, uh, you know, go into, into play because mm -hmm. I want to encourage people, oh yes, then you should stay out and drink all night. No, but like you're mm -hmm. saying, there are people who, it's an option. I think in this world we live in, we should all have options now. And drinking and driving, that is a choice, whether it's 4 a.m. or whether it's 4 mm -hmm. p.m. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to do it and you're going to put yourself in a position where you feel like you can't control yourself, you shouldn't be out at all. And that's Correct. the responsibility yeah. of the person. That's why Uber and Lyft have become so accessible and such a genius mm -hmm. idea. Because yes, while maybe the state will allow you know, there to, to the doors to be open until 4 a.m. and alcohol to be served until that time, mm -hmm. that is more job security for these Uber and Lyft workers out there who now will have a ton of people to access. Mm -hmm. So it's nothing to do, in my opinion, I'm not, I'm separating the idea of keeping the, the alcohol flowing before I am different from drinking and driving. And again, the, the comment from Senator Weiner was, my aunt was killed by a drunk driver in the 70s. It was devastating. I'm sensitive to drunk driving, but I don't think it'll increase drunk driving. And some of the people got to be the, smart. Yeah, some of the organizations who are behind this, because that's what I was interested in learning about too. Who supports this? Uh, might not be a much of a surprise to you. It is the California Restaurant Association sure. supporting. California Travel Association supports. California Hotel and Lodging Association. Mm -hmm. California Music and Culture Association. So all of the entertainment options, which then leads me right. to this next question. Does that mean we need to make sure law enforcement is then increased at that time? And I'm of sure the night? it will be. If this law passes and the governor signs off on it, then yes, it's a it's a ripple well, effect. And everything's uh, going to be affected. And the point out really quickly the right too: the cities will have a choice if they want to do this or not. Yeah. So it mm -hmm. won't be mandatory. Like, okay, mm -hmm. this is the law; you're going to do it. 
Right. Oh, well. So right. yeah. everybody will have the choice whether they want to. According to their this. people yeah. and what they want. And the it community. will be a vote, a community vote. I'm yeah, not that sure, I don't know. in a downtown, midtown Sacramento where there's now the arena, you know, I'm mm -hmm. driving around just going to the gym because I live in the area and there's graduations every night the past week. I mean, there's a lot happening. And in terms of business, we want to be a destination. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to be a place that people talk about. And you're on the map. Um, you know, y y these are opportunities for you to continue your growth, and I look at that as a positive thing um, and as an economy. Right, and if you, if you are against this, let's just say that this passes, uh, you're going to have that opportunity at your city council meeting to voice your opinion. She There'll vote. be local She's groups. Yeah, there. exactly. I mean, and if people organize, they're against it, even if it passes for the state of California. If your local city jurisdiction, if they want to go through with this, you still have an opportunity to speak up against it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the other thing too though, I'm just looking at the way that this is stacked up right now. Let's just face the reality of how things get done. These are big lobbying groups. Yeah. There's a lot of money. Right. And, 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 and in some cases, cities do, uh, there is money to be made in DUI arrests and prosecutions. Sure. That yeah. is a reality. It's it a reality. is part of the budget. Um, and so if they extend these hours, that may be a factor too in which some cities are doing their job by taking drug drivers off the street, which they should do, mm -hmm. um, but there's also some incentive that money will be coming in with extended drinking hours. That's a reality. It's in the budgets. So you can go and look it up yourself. And let me be very clear because, Patty, I see your multiple comments this morning. Patty brewer Habeck says you people are pur pur purporting on an okay on this issue. Shame on you. That is not true. We are simply delivering to you what is being given to us. Um, I think, in my opinion, I mm -hmm. question very much if this is actually something that I could get behind and whether or not I agree with it. I see both sides. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it does concern me absolutely to see that this could potentially lead to more drunk driving yeah, We don't like reporting on the those roads. stories every mm -hmm. day. It's heartbreaking. We've right. all, I mean, I'm sure we're, we're one person removed from someone who's lost a life or someone's child or brother or sister who's lost a life mm -hmm. um, from DUI incidents. Not condoning that at all. No. Yeah. And to, to point out another thing as far as uh, more employment opportunities, when you do extend the hours, then you have uh, ride share uh, options like Uber and Lyft hiring more drivers. Mm -hmm. You have yeah. more opportunities to be on the road because again, coming from LA and seeing before Uber and after mm. and during Uber, uh, people aren't driving themselves no. anymore. Not saying that that's, that's, that's not the happen. case. It still does yeah. happen, right. but the convenience and the number of people who are recognizing, hey, I wanna go out and have fun, I'm not driving. Let's mm -hmm. split an Uber. Like you know, it, it changes the yeah. it changes the narrative. It really changes an option. More anymore, people right? are on the road, not necessarily who have been drinking, but who are driving people to and from mm -hmm. a and party. So I think this might blow up. This might this is going to expand the conversation on all levels. Mm -hmm. You have to be willing to change with the times and know that there are those opportunities now like the mm -hmm. uber and Lyft, how accessible it mm -hmm. is and if you're choosing not to download the app and then not use a, an application like that to get you home safely then then that's on you and unfortunately and that's exactly what jasmine yeah. lawson says jasmine thanks for being with us jasmine says people should be responsible extended hours don't make drunk drivers people do and mm -hmm. working a weekend shift mm -hmm. in news uh, driving up and down interstate 80 for the last couple of years when i was working my saturday and sunday shifts I called in to 911 on drunk drivers on the road probably twice a month, I would mm -hmm. say, because I would recognize the vehicle going in and yeah, out of lanes, going from one side. You can tell. So, of course, we don't want to condone the fact that there would be more drunk drivers on the road. But I do think that when it comes to the case of Uber and Lyft, maybe that is when they see something like this as an opportunity to become more embedded in their communities, to have more of these options. And that would increase the job employment numbers, too, for those folks. Yeah, because, yeah. uh, again, pre-Uber and during Uber, totally different in regards to the amount of work that people can do. Mm -hmm. um, just and just having options because again before you had no choice. You had to take a cab, which is at right. two o'clock in the morning. Like Right. And th what? there was there is a, a crunch issue, right? Just like there's a like a lunchtime crash. What happened, uh, you know, I went to school in Santa Barbara. I saw this all the time, yeah. okay? Uh, <laughs> the bars, everyone would stay until two, and then they're like, I'm not driving home, forget this, let's get a cab. There's no cabs. So that was, that was when people started making those bad decisions. Mm -hmm. So when you extend the hours, people have their cutoff point. Maybe it's two, maybe they have work the next day, maybe it's three, maybe it's four. There's all these other ride sharing options. So you basically, instead of having this crunch where you have a resource issue with cabs, because remember cabs are heavily regulated. Cabin There's issues. only so many. 
Uh, there's just not enough to go around during that crunch time, and that's when people make those bad decisions and and they pay for it. Um, but you, this may be this may be beneficial in some ways to yeah. give m more people who want to make the right choice to make the right choice so that way they can just charge ahead and again split it split with their friends save some money get home safely because that's the whole point the whole point is to get home safely Absolutely. and avoid all these issues yeah. and like John I mean this is to your point Rob he said I get off at 1 by the time I'm in town it's past 2 a.m. so if I want a drink it'd be nice to grab one at a bar and then be able to head home yeah.